Okay, we're inside the shop here. This is the top of my toolbox, which I hate that it's a mess, but I'm always too lazy to clean. So, there's my little guy. I found this. This seems, I mean, this was just sitting right here when I got here in my toolbox. So, uh, this little guy looks like he'll be right. And I found a paper clip. And I was looking through my box of my <clears throat> old remote control car and airplane hardware. And, uh, looking at maybe if I find a piece of plastic good idea so that if something hits the thing again it'll deflect the plastic and not break the whole shebang. I mean it'd be nice yeah if I didn't even glue the plastic in. If I had something that would be kind of nice but I don't have anything like that. I mean I've got all kinds of places to look and dig but um, I kind of pretty much know what's in there nothing like what I would want. I could actually turn a piece of plastic on the lathe. But that's such a tiny little thing. So I'm going to go with the wire Jesus pin here. I'm going to cut a piece of this off. Let's measure it. Yeah. So we got, what do we got here? Sixteenth of an inch. That's perfect. A sixteenth of an inch drill bit work great with that and this is a little bigger than a sixteenth and it's fine all right so let's go set this thing up all right we're at the milling machine yes I know I'm a pig I need to clean this thing so here's my little guy I took it to the grinder and I ground off the uh, the tip of this thing so it would be flat, a little easier to work with. Got a 1 16th of an inch drill bit and uh, we're going to clean up here a little bit. Alright, let me open this guy up. So the only thing I'm worried about with this, or not worried, but concerned, I need to be careful with is uh, I don't want to crush my little guy. Oh yeah, if you're wondering why I'm talking funny, here's that uh, clip, a little bit longer than an inch, because I want about a half of an inch protrusion sticking up beyond this guy. So, we're just going to drill all the way through and then uh, supligate that puppy in there. So now i got to think about how I'm going to insert this in the vise so I can clamp it without crushing it. I guess the only way I can do it is to do it this way. And then at least it will be straight in this direction due to the fact that I have straight sides on it and I'll only have to adjust it in this direction to make sure I'm straight up and down. Gosh, I wish I had a tripod for this camera. Alright, so let's see. I'm not going to be able to do this with one hand. Hold on. Alright, so it's in there, it's just snug. You can see I can still... Maybe you can't see. I can still rotate it, it's just in there. So, you know, from the tipping in this direction, I'm straight enough for the purposes of what I gotta do here. And all I gotta do is go straight this way. So, to do that, I'm gonna put something in the drill chuck, like a drill bit, and run it down here to line it up. And then I'll give this just a little bit more snug in the, in the vise and then I will locate and drill the hole. So hold on. Okay, so I went and got my transfer punches, which are fairly straight. If you don't know what transfer punches are, I'll show you. You can, it's a whole set, like a, 
I guess it's a one sixteenth to one half, far less. Well, you know, it says it right on here. Uh, I can't read it, it's too dirty. But anyway, you can put this into a hole You find the right one for what you're doing, for example, like this. Hey, good guess, huh? And if I wanted to transfer center punch mark onto something else, you put this in the hole, and it centers in the hole, you ding it with a hammer on top, and now you've transferred, because of the little point that it has, like a center punch. Okay? So that's what center transfer punches are. They're cheap, man. You can get them on uh, all kinds of the Chinese. That actually is probably pretty good stuff. I bought from an aircraft mechanic about 30 years ago at a garage sale. All right, so retired, that is. Retired to Eastern Airlines. <laughs> so uh, I got this guy in there just to be an indicator of what straight up and down looks like. And I'm going to come over and turn in the crank on this to get closer to that. Okay, now I'll turn this crank down here to get closer to that, like so. Oops, sorry. Okay, so now I can come back here and you can see I'm off a little, right? a kid playing and he couldn't see because there wasn't enough light and I couldn't understand. Right, so I think that's straight enough. Right, I don't know why you don't focus on it. But, right, so let me give the bias just a little bit more attention. Let me put the wrench on the downhill. Hey Roper. the wrench here so gravity will help keep it tight rather than make it come loose because this is not tight at all I'm just barely putting pressure on this thing let's see I need to go a little tighter than that so, turn a little tighter oopsie sorry so, you know, that's, uh, I think, tight enough for our purposes. So now we can take this guy out, put you back in the set, okay, get our drill bit, which I probably can't do with one hand. Look at there, I did it. Look, Mom, one hand. Okay, put her back in here. All right, so now, this is not precise at all. I'm just gonna eyeball the center on this thing. Which I can see much easier by not looking through the camera lens. Okay. Oops, my way. Right about there. So, how about that? Yeah, so right over the dot. It's a little easier to tell when it's turning. She's gonna make some noise. I don't know if you'll be able to hear me, but, oopsie. Forgot to do something. So I got this, my lathe and my milling machine run on three phase AC, and I have a variable frequency drive that was attached to the lathe when I got the lathe. 
and that's the fan that you hear running in the background which I just plug in every day and I share these outlets so the variable frequency drive on the lathe turns on and turns off Oops. All right. with this lever that would make the lathe run that would make the lathe stop and that's how this lathe was set up uh, originally this was a mechanical clutch I don't know why I'm going into this but the motor would run continuously which is underneath here and uh, you would just turn it on this would run the motor forward or reverse okay and the, and the way this thing was built the motor would be running right now and uh, when you lift it up on this and engage the clutch and when you push down on it it went to neutral and then you could push down further and it would apply a brake. Well, all that worked with this dude over here, which was how you adjusted the speed. Um, this worked, it's got a cam in it, and it pushes on this master cylinder, which is like a brake master cylinder in your car. I've always told myself I'm going to cut this thing off one day. But then a hose would come off of this, and it went down underneath this thing where there was a cylinder. And the cylinder would activate this pulley, variable geometry pulley mechanism, which one of these days I'm going to post on eBay. Now that I'm posting this video of removing that, no one's going to want to go that way. They're going to want to go what I did. So anyway, you would lift up on the handle, lay the run, you push down on the handle, the variable frequency drive has got electronic braking, and it would stop the chuck. Then I bought the milling machine, and instead of spinning you know, $150, $200 for another one of these guys to make three phase for that dude. Uh, I just share it. I cut the wire off and I got a four pin plug, three pins for the three phase AC and one pin or blade, whatever you want to call it, to the ground. So when I want to use the milling machine, I just come over to the lathe, unplug the lathe. If I were to plug this into three phase, the AC, this would just come on running. So, um, I plugged in the milling machine, and I got to come over here and lift up the go handle. And uh, the cool thing about this is it's a uh, variable frequency drive, so I can set the cycles per second to whatever I want. I usually run like 55, 45, whatever. It just makes the motor run a little slower. So now that that lever is up, and what the dealio is, why I had to come over here, it was up when I plugged it in. And I've set the parameters on the variable frequency drive that if you turn on the power, it'll pop up with an error message and not make the machine run. You could have it work the other way, but I did it that way for safety. So I had to come over here, push the lever down to stop, hit the reset button on that, and then pull the lever back up to run. So now we got three phase AC running over through the milling machine and it operates like normal now. So now I can flip the handle up on this guy. And it's easier to see if you're lined up while it's spinning. It's a little bit wobbling a bit. You can better detect So, I like it. Let's see if we have luck with this. And the bit doesn't wander. I do have starter drills, but I'm too lazy of it. And I think it'll be fine. If it wanders, I'm lowering the bit down really slowly. It wandered. Alright. I'm going to get a starter drill. I knew better. So let me come over here. And here's a starter drill. It's the smallest one I got. It's bigger than a sixteenth of an inch, I think. So that's all you can do. 
guess I could try chucking up on this. Oh, wait, there's a small one. Hey, all right. So, this will work. So these are just like a little drill bit tip, but it's really short, right? And really rigid. So, hold on. All right, I chucked up the little guy. So that won't flex when I go to start the drilling. And I don't have to worry about repositioning or anything because I didn't move anything. Actually, this is a little bit easier to see for alignment purposes, isn't it? I think I'll come over just a few thousands that way. Let's turn it on. Listen. Listen. Let me get a drill hole started. Hmm, it just flex? No, it did. Take this guy out and set it there and hopefully not drop it. So I'm going to put this little guy back in here. Oh, wait. I'm on the spot. So I could set my digital readouts zero. Now I can move. It's kind of academic at this point because I'm going to shift it probably. Okay. Okay, now we can pull this down in here, and once again, do this to get us straight. Okay, I think that's good enough. All right, now we can take this guy. Put you back in the set. Okay. Now uh, one-handed operation, stick our drill bit back in. And cheat here with two hands. Okay. Chucked it up a little bit shorter this time. All right, so I can put my position back to zero. Close enough to zero anyway. Three thousands, two thousands, one and a half, one. There we go. So we're back where we were, but since we tipped it, let's double check that we're I think we need to shift a little bit. So, and now, 
Let's see how close this fits. I'm hoping it'll be real snug. Okay, super glue will take care of the rest of that. Okay, so now we're going to pull this guy out of here. All right. Cleaned it up. I'm going to clean this thing up. With, uh, I'll clean that with some brake clean, but this guy here, I'll... Well, I know the hole's pretty clean. I guess I'll just leave it. I'll deburr it anyway with a razor blade. And super glue the pin in. I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. So I'm going to try to do this with one hand and not screw up. So I got my super glue. I buy this stuff in large containers of four and a half ounces. I got my solar spray ready. So what I want to do is put a tiny dot of glue on the hole. Okay, I can see I just put a little dot of glue on the hole. If you keep your super glue in the refrigerator, it'll last a long time. This container is probably like a year old. And it won't harden up on you. So, here we go. Oops. I'm trying to do two things here at once. Can't see everything. Hmm. Coming out the side there. Okay. They're in there like swimwear. And now, you can hit it with this, and it'll cure it right now. So it's set. So now I'm just going to take and wipe all that off. I got my little cleaner. I could just leave it with the needle like that. Maybe I will. I was thinking about painting it red. I got a little bit of red spray paint, but all right, so that's uh, good enough to go back in the vehicle, just how it is, and I'll be able to see. Let's size it up. Okay. There you go. I got an indicator again. Ah, I gotta paint it. I can't leave it. We'll give it a try. Alright, so I'm gonna have to degrease this thing. Maybe I will use a little bit of brake clean uh, paper towel to get the accelerator spray off. Make sure it's not oily. I'll give it a light shot of uh, primer for the metal, at least, and give it a little spritz, spritz of paint. I'll come back. Right, here we go. So, primer. Hopefully, I won't blow this thing right off the table. I'll give it a light little. Primer, focusing on just the metal piece. Really, I don't need to do this side at all. But all right, beautiful. So now we need to clean this thing with brake clean. It's just a good work habit. Keeps it from messing up. Okay, that's clean. Of course, I would use two hands normally. And if you notice, the brake clean squirted out of the hole when I did that. And 
Just set it on there and ready for next time. Okay. Gosh, I wish I could not have to worry about folk aiming this camera. Alright, so I got some red paint in here somewhere. I used it just the other day. Did I leave it out? I guess I was a good boy and put it away. It'll teach me. Now I can't find it. Oh, it's probably right there in front. Sunrise Red. Beautiful day. It feels like it's about 75 degrees. Crazy. This is what Florida's all about right here. Too bad the other 300 days are so damn hot. All right, so let's see if this is shot. Let's see if we can have some success with this. Light coat is all I need. Done. Okay. What do you think? I mean, it's a really light coat of paint, but all the rest of that doesn't even show. I don't care. Alright, so back to clean out these guys again. Yeah, great. Huh? That's what happens when you try to do something with one hand. It takes two. Alright, <clears throat> so we'll just give that a few minutes and then we'll reinstall it and I'll show you guys the finished products. Oh, you know what? While I got the super glue out, I gotta glue this thing. So, I should probably find the screw for it and pull it out the rest of the way, put a dot of glue in there, and then push it back in. And that I certainly can't do with one hand, so I'm gonna put you on hold. Okay. I'm not going to be able to do this and let you guys watch, but so what I'm going to do is put a little bit of super glue in the hole, and then I'm going to put a little bit of super glue on the outside of this brass piece, set it there, and tap it in with the hammer until it's flush like that one. And you know what? That one's sticking up a little bit, just a tad. I've got the thin super glue. This is the medium here. I think I'll go get the thin and drip it around that and do a little bomb that in. Just to make sure that thing doesn't pop out. So what we're gonna do is tap this thing. Now that, that one didn't move, so maybe that one's solid. Alright, so uh, hang on man. Okay, so Glued it in, tapped it in, give it a shot of cellular spray. I probably should have taken the screw out first. But super glue doesn't stick to metal very well. There you have it, ladies and gents. Get my little paper towel over here. So that's ready to go back on. That'll be dry enough to handle in a minute. And I'll show you that later. Alright. So here we are. <clears throat> Still a little tacky. Let's see if I can do this one hand again. Uh, 
right. Now, back here. Okay, put the cable in there. All right, get the fiber optics out of the way. Stretch the spring. In there. In there. So now, we shift the lever. We got reverse. No focus. Come on, man. Focus. Freaking iPhones. Okay. It's doing what it needs to do. Now, next thing, I gotta plug the LED back in with one hand. tie wrap and I'm going to tie wrap it right back there like it was. Alright. And uh, this guy's all ready to rock and roll. What's wrong with my focus? It ain't focusing. I must have touched something I shouldn't have. So anyway. Trying to figure them out. I don't know what's going on. So I took a tap and I tapped out the hole with the glue in it because it was a little gummy. And I ran a die on the threads of the bolts or screws. And that's the top half. This is the bottom half. Three screws. Alright. So the two of those match. And then there's a third one right there. I'm going to tighten that up. That'll be, that'll be it, man. Well, those are not the original screws, but those are a couple 1032s I dug up. I think I should get washers. Because those holes are kind of large. I've done such a terrible job of keeping up with all my screws and stuff. Right there. in there and this was this last minute work that I did that I didn't put those anywhere I just get too lazy but I'm good to go all right I'll show you the finished product in a minute all right got it all back together how about that huh The idea that there's no cover on it, but hey, it's good enough. It's better than it was. I can see what gear I'm in. And it works. If I had the battery in, I could check everything, but hey, it's in. Let's see if I can operate this little foot pedal. How about that, huh? Just goes up by itself. You can adjust it wherever you want. Take your foot off the pedal. Okay. okay, steering wheel's done. One small step for mankind, or however that thing is. All right. I'll put this little screw in here so I don't lose it. I thought that was going to be for this cover, but there's another cover that goes on that. Yeah, I'm done for the day. My little woman wants me to go with her to the Mitchells. See you later, guys.